Imagine, what if World War II raged on two years longer? What if America's hand was forced to use more atomic weapons? What if the Nazis won the war, resulting in millions more innocent lives lost? World War II caused enough destruction in the years it took place. Hitler's reign over Nazi Germany can be described in one word, evil. However, one man is to be credited with shaving at least two years off the war itself, bringing about the downfall of this evil. This man's story has yet to be recognized as it should be. This is the story of Eric Erickson, the greatest World War II spy. Eric Erickson was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1890 to Swedish immigrant parents. He had come from quite a normal and humble beginning, as did most poor immigrants to America at the time. He played football in his younger years and eventually went on to earn a degree in engineering at Cornell University. Seeking opportunity in the young and thriving America, he started working in the rich oil fields of Texas at the age of 21. Quickly becoming a self-made millionaire off of his oil business, he enjoyed the perks that came along with it, freely indulging in his success. Years later, he saw thriving economic opportunities in Sweden, so he moved his business overseas, continuing to become very wealthy. As World War II began in 1939, Erickson's path to moral destruction began when he made the decision to trade with Adolf Hitler and the Nazis in Germany. He was able to make millions of dollars off of Hitler through this trade, over $10 million in the first year alone. Although he was never really sold on the Nazi ideals that Hitler enforced throughout his reign, greed overpowered Erickson's conscience. He became trapped by the enormous amounts of money he was making with the Nazis, a cash-in he couldn't imagine abandoning. Going overboard to betray himself as a pro-Nazi to those sponsoring his lavish lifestyle, he disowned his only Jewish friend and lost the respect of other friends and family. After learning of what he had done to display his loyalty to Hitler, his family in America was so disgusted and ashamed that they disowned him. His brother sent him an enraged letter calling him a traitor to his country and a disgrace to his family. Then, when America entered the war in 1939, everything changed. Erickson had two nephews in the military that were soon to be fighting against the very country he was supplying and trading with. Moved by the guilt of what he had done and who he had hurt in the process, he experienced an epiphany. Seeking a way to make up for his selfish greed, he discovered the OSS. The Office of Strategic Services, the predecessor to the CIA, was a central intelligence agency formed during World War II. It was created to coordinate espionage activities behind enemy lines. In order to atone his prior lifestyle, Erickson made the life-threatening decision to aid the Allies in bringing the downfall of Hitler's Nazi regime. His decision came with many sacrifices. In order to protect his Swedish wife, Elsa, he hid his espionage work from her. She received harsh criticism and judgment towards her husband day after day and year after year from pro-American family and friends, which gradually drove her insane. Erickson's poor wife ended up spending the rest of her life in and out of a mental asylum, all because she couldn't understand or handle the decisions Erickson was making. Another sacrifice Erickson was forced to make towards the end of his spying mission was the tragic death of his fellow German agent whom he fell in love with. Held and questioned by the Gestapo on accounts of suspicion, Erickson was forced to watch his secret love's execution without reacting. Despite these consequences of his work, the pain endured would not be suffered in vain. Erickson's connections with prior employers during his money-making years in turn helped him to be an effective spy. He formed a vital relationship with the Nazi second-in-command Heinrich Himmler. Himmler was very close to Adolf Hitler and in charge of the German synthetic oil manufacturing, the main source of Nazi power during World War II. Befriending Himmler and other high-ranking Nazi officials, Erickson proposed an economic plan beneficial to both sides. They signed lucrative oil deals with the architects of the final solution, the name given to Hitler's plan to execute the Jewish race.
With newly built relationships with Nazi officials, Ericsson convinced them that he could build an oil plant in Switzerland safe from Allied bombing. The charming and personable man he was, he also was able to convince them that in order to do this, he would need to see all the German synthetic oil plants and how they worked in order to utilize his plans for an oil plant in Switzerland. Ericsson eventually toured most of the prized synthetic oil plants in Germany, gathering valuable information which, as a spy, he secretly fed back to the Allies in America. These locations given to the Allies were used by American bombers to target the precise locations of many German oil plants, in effect destroying the German economy and killing the Nazi war machine. Another aid in his spying mission was his Swedish government alibi, which he used to assure the Nazis that his oil business with them didn't have anything to do with the war. The Swedish government had been aware of Ericsson's oil trading and had actually been tracking him throughout the duration of the war. After completing his mission, Ericsson was even awarded a Medal of Honor for his work. So the question we ask ourselves now is, why has Ericsson's legacy remained untold for so many years? Why has his incredible sacrifice not been brought to light, especially with its tremendous effects on World War II? Espionage author Stephen Talty asked himself the same question before researching and telling Eric Erickson's story in his book, The Secret Agent. In an interview with Mr. Talty, he told us that what made Erickson's story so incredible is that after coming to his epiphany, Erickson risked his own life spying for the OSS during World War II, something that most spies of the time were blackmailed into doing. After returning to America from Europe, Erickson could have opted out of the world together, but instead made the decision to help his homeland. Though formerly called a traitor, Erickson atoned himself by becoming a true hero, hoping to end the gruesome war and millions of casualties. And while he may not have led armies into battle like so many other great leaders in history, he paved a way for the courageous to do what is right and to help those in need. Eric Erickson's legacy may not be commonly known, but in the end his life served as an ultimate example of courage. The sacrifices he made, the legacy he left behind, and his leadership through means of courage and bravery are what make Eric Erickson a truly incredible individual and the greatest World War II spy the world has ever seen.